I don't know, but you know, I did some digging into that, and uh, KDE One uses these things called KDE Link. And okay. if you open a KDE Link file, it looks suspiciously like a modern desktop file. Uh huh. So I don't think there. I need to, you know, verify how much difference there is, but it looks like that. The basic idea for that goes a long ways back. Well, yeah, a lot of stuff that Free Dust, uh, Free Desktop did early on was kind of. There were unofficial standards, like the um, XDG desktop entries, where you know you have your um, like your download file at the home slash download. You have your documents at home slash documents. Music home slash music. Like this is stuff that people were already doing. A lot of the stuff was just a formalization of those ideas. Yeah, the. Uh, uh... The free desktop specs actually been you know pretty good for helping that, mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know if you've seen they're actually kind of in a little bit of a uh, tizzy with their servers trying. Yeah, to I just put a video that. out about that today. Yeah, yeah, they. So uh... I hope they can find another uh, provider, but you know it just amazes me how much resources that they have put you know forward to doing that. Mm -hmm. Well. I have been told that their servers are considerably more expensive than they need to be. Um, they probably could host everything on much cheaper servers with a better layout of their infrastructure. Um, but, you know, if someone's sponsoring the hardware and they're throwing, you know, $20,000 of CPUs at you, you can kind of just, like, brute force stuff. <laughs> you don't really yeah. need to have a great structure. You know, that's one of the things about a lot of these projects is even like me, you know, I have a server. All my stuff is hosted on my own server, which is just in the other room. Mm -hmm. And there's only so much time, you know, we have to sit, you know, and manage GitLab and, you know, all the stuff behind that. Mm -hmm. And so we end up with, you know, a lot of unoptimized setups because of that. So the time split between maintaining infrastructure and code has to you know, be balanced. But I think they could probably move to another data center and mm -hmm. improve it quite a bit, though. Yeah, they've been talking about wanting to move to Hetzner, I believe. Um, and they've gotten quotes for it, even using the same layout they have. It's going to be like $10,000 cheaper than it was before, which, yeah, it definitely is a nice improvement, if you ask me. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think Hetzner's a good option to consider. I've used them. Uh, they've got pretty good hardware, pretty good support, so that would be a great thing to see there. But this isn't the first time they've had a problem anyway. Um, back in 2020, they were on um, Google Cloud, and Google Cloud was sponsoring them back then as well, and then they stopped doing the open source credits program, and suddenly they had to pay the entirety of the Google Cloud bill. And then they move to Equinix, and they have they now have the same problem again. So, like, this is a thing that happens every couple of years. They've dealt with it before. It's probably a good idea to have a contingency plan in place. So, if it does happen again, they don't suddenly have to, like, come up with an idea of what to do. But I have no doubt that they can, they can deal with it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think they've got a lot of great people in the community to help them. But even still, any migration is just... It's a really hard thing to do to move that much data over. Yeah. So, uh, you know, a lot of people sponsored, like they said, you know, Equinix has provided them servers for you know so many years. And that's a great thing that they've done that. Mm -hmm. I believe it also, it's not just affecting free desktop. Um, Alpine Linux also was on Equinix Metal as well. And they now have to move somewhere else. And I'm sure there are a bunch of other projects that were also using Equinix Metal, um, whether they were sponsored or whether they were doing it themselves. Uh, anytime you have a, a server provider shut down, you're going to have a lot of, just, a lot of people that are working overtime. I'm not mistaken, I think Flathub has some other stuff on Equinix as well. I haven't seen any of the Flathub people mention it, but if free desktop's on it, I wouldn't be surprised if some of Flathub's on it. Yeah, I, I could be wrong on that, but I believe some of their stuff is on there uh wait yeah no <laughs> no you are right yeah four days ago um one of them mentioned uh yeah the, the equinix metal has been one of their sponsors as well so they also 
have to move. Uh, is it... I don't think it's the store itself. It looks like it's their build pipeline. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, you know, annoying. Like, any, as I said, anything like this is going to be really annoying to deal with. And I'm, I, I, I have no doubt that these projects can find something new. And I know AWS uh, was offering some open source uh, credit program. So some of them might move to that. Uh, I know a a AWS has like a review process though, and that's kind of the reason why Free Desktop didn't want to go over there because they didn't want to have to deal with like the I think it's like a monthly review of whether the way you're using the credits is like sensible if you're like trying to go over how much they're offering you things like that. Um, either way, uh, you know, hosting's important. But also hosting's expensive, uh, especially if you're a big project. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's. Uh, I, I think people don't realize just how big Free Desktop is, and just how much is under the banner of Free Desktop. I, I I've talked a, a bit about the a, a shortlist of it, uh, but pretty much every Linux user is using probably at least two or three things on Free Desktop. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, free desktop covers quite a bit. You know, everything from XOR to Wayland. Uh, I believe things, you know, even deeper than that, like LibInput, yep. Mesa, I think are all on free desktop. So every Linux desktop user is depending on their services at some point. Mm -hmm. Both uh, Pulse Audio and Pipewire are also part of free desktop as well. I don't think there's any, any love lost for Pulse Audio if it goes away. <laughs> I don't know, Pulse Audio is a weird one, right? I think a lot of the hate for Pulse Audio is kind of like the hate for KDE, where, follow along with this, so a lot of people think KDE is really buggy because they either remember KDE 4 or they have heard people talk about remembering KDE 4. And KDE 4, that was a development release released as a full release like that was that was entirely them screwing up there was no reason the kde4 should have been called the 4.0 release that was entirely a mistake but pulse audio is in a similar way where if you go back to the adoption of pulse audio you will hear people like Leonard pottering who worked on pulse audio saying pulse audio is the audio system uh, the audio system that breaks your audio because Distros like Ubuntu were shipping it with completely broken configurations. Nobody knew what they were doing with Pulse Audio back then. It was a giant mess. So you have people that have been around since the start of Pulse Audio who've talked about it being really buggy. But like last time I used Pulse Audio, it was fine. It's just because it was buggy for so long and people... It's really easy to convince someone of something rather than change their mind. So once something becomes good, now you have an issue of how do you make them realize it's good? It's really hard to kill, you know, it's really hard to kill bits on the internet. Mm -hmm. And you're right, you know, it, it works pretty good these days. Uh, it definitely earned its reputation in the early days, but mm -hmm. uh, it, it works pretty well. You know, I'm using it right now and nobody would know the better. Mm-hmm. 